Hi friends, welcome to Beautifully Bookish Bethany. This is the start of my reading vlog for the Trans Rights Readathon. It is starting today. It is Monday, March 20th, and it runs for a week ending next Monday. And I'm going to be vlogging all of the books that I read during this week. If you missed my announcement video, I'll link it up above. I am also doing a fundraiser for the Callan Lord Community Health Center in New York, which provides health and mental health services, among other things, to members of the LGBT community, including trans folks in New York. And uh, I'm very excited because as I'm filming this, we are almost at $400 raised of my $1,000 goal. Amazing. Thank you so much to everyone who's donated. Quick reminder, if you're interested in being entered into the giveaway I'm running for a copy of Light from Uncommon Stars by Rekha Aoki, don't forget to send me proof of your donation. I know this video won't be going up until the end of the readathon, but you do have until April 1st. That's when the fundraiser is ending. That's when the giveaway is ending. And I'm donating $20 for each book that I read this week by a trans author. So I am dropping everything and this is what I'm doing. Some of the books that I'm reading will be tour titles so that I can kind of put those on in my tour.comathon thing because I'm running that this month, but I'm reading some other stuff as well. I did start a little early, but I haven't finished anything yet. I started reading a couple things last night. I wanted to update you on the books that I am reading at the moment because I have quite a few going. Of course I do in different formats. Who's surprised? On audio, I am listening to The Terraformers by Annalie Newitz. Loving this so far. It's a sci-fi novel by a non-binary author set in the far distant future on a planet that is being terraformed by these uh, humanoid people, mostly, and sentient animals that were created to be able to live in the atmospheric conditions of this planet. But there are some secrets and some conspiracy things going on and I'm loving it so far. Really enjoying this. So this is my current audiobook read. Physically, I have two books in progress at the moment, partly because one of them is a little bit dense and I, it's not something I'm going to read straight through. I'll be reading it throughout the course of the readathon. That is Black on Both Sides, A Racial History of Trans Identity by C. Riley Snorton. This is an academic title. I read the preface and the introduction last night, so I'll get into the meat of the book, but I wanted to include some non fiction on this TBR, thinking about the intersections of trans identity and race and how those things come into play. So really excited to read this. It's by a scholar and writer who is a trans black man. And then I am also picking up Love After the End, an anthology of two-spirit and indigiqueer speculative fiction edited by Joshua Whitehead. I, again, have just barely started the first story. I mostly read the introduction last night, but I'm excited to dive into this. It's been on my TBR for a while. It's uh, not very long. It's less than 200 pages, and I think it's like nine speculative stories by indigenous authors who are two-spirit or queer. Looking forward to getting further into that. I don't have too much to say about it yet. And then the final book that I am currently reading is an ebook. I am reading Heart Haunt Havoc by Frady Smoon. This is a novella that I'm actually really loving. It's a little different than what I read from Moon previously, but this I think is actually working better for me. It's gothic horror with some erotic romantic subplots to it. It's got two trans characters, a trans man and a non-binary character. There's a haunted house. Really into it so far. I'm about 33% of the way through this one and I don't think it will take me very long to finish. It is a novella so it's on the shorter side. So those are the things that I'm reading currently and I'm enjoying all of them. Really excited to be diving into the Trans Rights Readathon this week and taking you along with me. As you can see, I it is morning and I am not ready for the day. I think I'm actually going to hop into some workout clothes and exercise a little bit while I listen to my audiobook and then get ready for the day because I've got lots of things to do and lots of reading to do. So check back in soon. It is late afternoon. It has not been as productive a day as I was hoping. I kind of had a headache, wasn't feeling great, but I am feeling better, which is good because I have to go to a thing. I have to go pick up my kids soon. But I'm about two thirds of the way through The Terraformers by Annalie Newitz, and I am loving it. It's interesting too because it's following, I, I'm seeing as we get into part two, multiple characters across very long lengths of time. I love Whistle. Whistle is this moose, this like, sentient moose who is a person and I love him. This has a lot of kind of casual queerness. It is normalized that people share their pronouns when they introduce themselves to each other and 
you know, like people aren't homo sapien, there, there's a lot of like sci-fi stuff going on, but that piece is interesting. But I think what's interesting about this is that while that part of it isn't reproducing some of the systems of oppression that queer folks face in our world, it is a highly capitalistic system that is oppressive to a lot of people for other reasons, where people are being created, like li literally created by corporations to the point where they own them and they're created for specific purposes. And it's kind of asking questions about what does personhood mean and what does it look like? And also how does disability influence the way that we think about rights and personhood? And it's not doing it directly. I think it's doing it partly through these animals who've been created who are people, but I don't know, it's, it's really interesting. There's a lot of interesting nuanced conversations happening in this book. I'm very much enjoying it and uh, look forward to continuing on. I also have made some more progress in Haunt House Havoc, ha House Haunt Havoc, I don't know, this, this one. And I'm continuing to really love it. it. It's exactly what I said. It's like a gothic horror novel. It's a haunted house story. It's got some Catholic vibes to it, dealing with demons and the supernatural and getting rid of things. It also has an erotic romance subplot to it, although I wouldn't call this an erotic romance, which I kind of expected going in because I think the last thing that I had read from Freitas Moon was an erotic romance with horror elements. This I would say is gothic horror with erotic romantic elements to it. So definitely a bit of a shift, but I'm really enjoying it. I think I, this is actually working better for me than their previous novella did. So really enjoying that. So far things are going well. I will check back in once I have finished a book. It is day two of the readathon. I have finished a couple books. I will be back to talk about them later, but right now I'm going to get my hair cut. And we have brand new hair. Yay! I love it, honestly, and it feels so good. Um, yeah, I've had an undercut for a while, but I needed to get it updated, and I was just ready for a change, and I really like it. It's awesome. I'm, I'm low-key thinking maybe next time I'll go for some color streaks. We'll see. We'll see how brave I get. But I uh, wanted to do an update because I have finished reading a couple of things. I finished The Terraformers by Annalie Newitz and I really enjoyed it. I would give this four stars. One thing that I will say about it, and I, I'm going to give credit where credit is due because I saw this line in a review from Thomas from SFF 180 and I think this kind of nails what this book feels like. It feels like marathoning three seasons of a TV show. And it's divided up into three parts. A lot of detailed things are happening in the lives of people, even though it's dealing with much larger themes like capitalism and uh, gentrification and personhood and what makes you a person and how do we measure intelligence and all of these things. Like there's a lot of big themes, but it's exploring it through the sort of zoomed in lives of individual characters across a span of many, many years, which is why it's divided into three parts. So it really does kind of feel like you're watching three seasons of a TV show all in, you know, less than 400 pages, which can make the pacing a little weird. I wouldn't be surprised if this doesn't work for everybody because it's unusual. It's different from other things that I've read, but I really enjoyed it. I love Whistle, who is our sentient moose character. Um, he's adorable. I love him. I just like Danielie Newitz's writing and I will be seeking out more of their work in the future. So I would definitely recommend this. I liked it. I gave it four stars. I also finished reading Heart Haunt Havoc and I really liked it a lot as well. I think if you're looking for a novella that is a gothic haunted house horror story with Catholic undertones to it and a bit of an erotic romantic subplot with two trans characters that ends up being surprisingly sweet, this is a fantastic option. I haven't written my review for this one yet, so I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to rate it, but I feel like it's probably in the four and a half star range for me. I very much enjoyed it. I will continue to pick up things from Freitas Moon in the future. This gave me a lot of vibes. I also think that it does a nice job of talking about the trauma of past relationships that have ended and healing from that. I, yeah, I, I just, I don't, I really don't have a lot of negative things to say about it. It does get gruesome. I mean, it is horror and there, there are some bloody, creepy, gruesome things that happen, but I really liked it a lot. So 
again, would recommend. I have not finished anything else yet, but I did start The Descent of Monsters by Neon Yang, and I'm pretty well into it. I'm enjoying this quite a lot. It's interesting because this is set up as a mystery investigation, where some of the events of the last novella, which so far has been my least favorite in this series, are being investigated by somebody, and they're trying to figure out what the government is covering up with what happened with this dead naga and conspiracy things. So really enjoying it. This entire novella series is set in a world where people choose their gender when they come of age. So it's kind of this queer norm society. And uh, yeah, really enjoying it so far. Nian Yang is a non-binary author from Singapore. So would recommend so far. I will let you know what I think when I finish it and I will continue on with other books. Oh, and one other thing that I kind of randomly did start reading because it popped up on my radar and I was like, what the hell, let's add another short thing in here and I haven't finished it yet, but I am reading Claiming Mrs. Claus by RM Virtues. This is a short erotic piece of fiction by a black trans mask author and I've read from RM Virtues before. He writes some really fantastic stuff. I read a long form novel, but I was like, oh, Oh, this is short, it's pretty inexpensive, let me pick it up and, and read it. If you have Kindle Unlimited, it's on there. The premise is kind of fun. Basically, Mrs. Claus and Santa have been together a very long time and have now transitioned into being a platonic partnership. And uh, there's a couple of security elves who are pretty into Mrs. Claus. So this one is polyamorous and queer and yeah, so far it's... <laughs> So far it's fun, surprisingly sweet for the premise, but obviously it's erotica. So, you know, you, you kind of know what to expect with it. But so far it's pretty good. I will check back in once I have finished some other stuff. Hi y'all, it is day three of the Trans Rights Readathon and I'm here with an update. Also, I gotta say, I am really loving my new haircut. Uh, it's making me very happy, but I digress. I can't remember <laughs> what I talked about yesterday. I'm not sure if I did an update, but I did finish reading Descent of Monsters by Nian Yang, and I liked it. I enjoyed this. I would still say that The Black Tides of Heaven is probably my favorite novella in the series so far, but this is coming in second. I think it's interesting because each of them is quite different, and it feels like they were maybe experimenting with different styles all set in the same world. And this one is a mystery. It's an investigation into hidden secrets and atrocities that were taking place at this secret government research facility. I really liked it a lot. I gave it four stars. I would recommend the series. I think it's cool and I think the world it's creating is interesting just from a gender perspective which is appropriate for the readathon. I also completed a reread of Even Though I Knew the End by C.L. Polk and I really love this. I've got to say I think I like this even better the second time around. I gave it four stars on my first read and five stars on a reread. I think that it holds up really well. It's an excellent novella and even though I knew the end, do you see what I did there? Uh, I, it was still really enjoyable to see the way that C.L. Polk laid the foundation for the revelations that were going to happen. You could see how they knew what they were doing. They had plans and they kind of laid those steps to everything that ends up happening. It's so good <laughs> and so rich and it's not a very long novella but there's a lot of world building that happens. I really care about the relationship between these two women. The mystery is interesting and there's like angels and demons. So there's this like religious element to it and the messaging in here which I think is really beautiful that who you're sleeping with is way less important than whether you carry love in your heart. I just I really love this a lot. It was great. Highly recommend. Again, the author is non-binary. There are no obviously trans characters in the book, but it is a queer novel and a sapphic romance and uh, it was great. It'll be fun to discuss at the end of the month because it's also our group book for Tor.comathon. Then I did also finish Claiming Mrs. Claus by RM Virtues. This is a shorter polyamorous erotic romance story with Mrs. Claus and a couple of bisexual elves. I, you know what? If you are looking for holiday themed erotica. It is going to give you what you are looking for and it is surprisingly sweet. So if you're looking for something that is very high on the steam scale but also does have some degree of character and relationship development, albeit brief, this might be one to pick up. As well as you get a black Mrs. Claus and two tall black elves, one of whom has locks. So 
it was good. It's not going to be for everybody because not everybody wants that. But if you are looking for that, I would recommend it. Um, okay, so a couple other things I wanted to update you on. I have started a new audiobook and I'm loving it. That is The Midnight Bargain by C.L. Polk. Same author who wrote Even Though I Knew the End. So far, I don't know if this is gonna be a queer book. I think I had it in my head that it might be sapphic, but I'm not sure that that's actually the case. Regardless, I am really enjoying it. It's historical fantasy romance that is very overtly feminist in the themes that it's exploring. I think people who don't like overt feminism in their fantasy might be irritated because it has points at which it's a little on the nose with what it's saying. I don't mind that. I'm enjoying it. I also really like a fantasy of manners, which is what this is. It's, you know, kind of reproducing British Regency society, except with magic, and where there's a lot of gendered oppression taking place in terms of who can and can't use magic and how that's tied to things like marriage and fertility. And our main character is a young woman whose family needs her to get married so that they can survive because financially they really need her to get married. She doesn't want to get married. She wants to train to be a mage, even though that's kind of not usually an option for a woman. And yeah, so far I'm really enjoying it. It's very up my alley. So that is going well. Lastly, I thought I would update you on Black on Both Sides, A Racial History of Trans Identity. It's very interesting. I, this is where I'm at. I'm about halfway through it and I've read the first two full chapters. They're like very meaty. This is quite academic. So the language being used is very theoretical. This is not written for a wide popular audience. However, I think if you can deal with that, it is very interesting. It's tracing the history of blackness and gender in some interesting ways and doing some stuff I just hadn't thought about that I'm like, that actually makes a lot of sense in terms of the way that enslavement of black people in America ended up leading to almost the degendering of them, where for instance, black women often weren't viewed as feminine or as women in the same way that white women were, and how things like medical experimentation in early gynecology was influenced by that and some of the horrific things that went on. The way that blackness was treated as transitory, it's really fascinating. So I, I haven't finished it yet, but I feel like it's building this really strong argument. And I can see a lot of connections too between some of what this is talking about and uh, this book by Sabrina Strings that I would highly recommend as well, which is talking about the history of anti-fat bias and its intersection with blackness. I think these would be really interesting to read in conjunction with each other because they kind of inform some of the same things. They're drawing on some of the same history. So anyway, it's very good. It is a bit dense, so I'm just doing a chapter a day, which is good because it like takes some real paying attention to it, but it's well worth the effort. I'm going to do some more reading this afternoon. Maybe I'll take you along for part of it and then I'll check back in later. I'll, I'll do a formal update later once I've gotten myself together, but I just need to record this because I, I just finished The Mary Spinster by Daniel M. Laverty. The name has changed. Um, wow. I am floored. This has been sitting on my bookshelf for years and I just haven't picked it up. And it's interesting that I'm reading it now because I feel like now is the time that it would hit me the way that it did. Like the point in my life when this was the collection of stories that I needed. And uh, yikes, I, like I didn't expect this to hit me as hard as it did. It just, um, damn. I, I need to gather my thoughts and think about how to talk about it, but if you are deconstructing from evangelicalism or Christianity in general, I would really recommend this. It, like, it does some things that I don't think I would have been prepared to read and understand a few years ago 
that just hit real hard now. And there are a lot of undertones of, of queerness and questioning gender identity. And it feels like an intersectional version of feminism woven into a lot of these stories. But I just, the date, mm, wow. I am not okay. <laughs> anyway, um, I need to like get myself together and I'll do a fuller update on this and other things that I finished reading because it's not the only thing I finished. But I just, I had to capture my feelings in this moment because I, I was like, oh, this is a good opportunity to read this book that's been sitting on my shelves for so long. I did not expect it to just do this to me so it's uh, it's so good but I also really get why there might be mixed reviews of it I think to fully understand what he's doing with this collection there are some cultural and religious touchstones that are important uh but okay wow anyway um I was too tired to do a full update yesterday, so it's Friday. Uh, I have finished a couple of different things, including this, so I will be back once I, I have myself together to do more of a full update, but shit, <laughs> this book. Okay, all right. Hey y'all, sorry, I am not doing a great job at vlogging. It's like a day and a half since my last clip that's just that is how my life is going right now but I have been reading I have finished quite a few things that I want to talk to y'all about and I think based on how I'm going right now I'm gonna finish at least 10 books for the week which is exciting I didn't necessarily know if I would complete that many so let's talk about a few things first up now that I'm a little like out of my feelings and I've had some time to reflect on my thoughts on the Mary Spinster. I still freaking love this book, but I think I can talk a bit more eloquently about it. I've actually written a Goodreads review. One thing that I find really fascinating is I went to Goodreads and there are so many negative reviews for this book, which is so interesting. And most of the reviews, because I was looking through some of the top negative reviews, were people not getting the point of the stories. Which I guess I can see because I think if you don't have the right background for what some of these stories are doing, you might not get it. And I also think if you're going into this looking for just straight up horror short stories or fairy tale retellings, that's not really what you're getting either. These are much more literary and metaphorical and have lots of layers to what they're saying. But I loved it so much. <laughs> like so much. I would definitely recommend this to my fellow former and deconstructing Christians, evangelical Christians, other Christians, because a major theme, not in every story in here, but in quite a few stories, is religious trauma <laughs> and homophobia in religion. And just there's, y'all, the way some of these stories hit me so hard I was not prepared. It's one of those cases of, I think, a book coming into my life at the perfect time, and not even in my life. It's been sitting on my shelves for years, and I just haven't picked it up, and kind of on a whim, decided, hey, this author's trans. I've been meaning to get to this. Let me put it on my TBR for the Trans Rights Readathon, and I'm so glad that I read this when I read it, because I think if I had read it a few years ago, it it just wouldn't have been the right timing for it to really hit me the way that it did. This is also doing a lot of interesting things with gender and gender identity. And you know, it's not it's, it's interesting reading this, because when this came out, the author was not out as trans. But reading it now, you can totally see how that was probably some of what he was working through in these stories, because there's a lot of interesting approaches to gender and theology and stuff like that. Like, for instance, there is a sort of Cinderella retelling that is reframing God as the evil stepmother, and is doing a lot to unpack religious trauma and theology and homophobia in the church in really fascinating ways and is meanwhile playing with gender too because the Cinderella type character is a daughter named 
Paul, which number one obviously is referencing one of the writers of the New Testament of the Bible. And so I think there's there's some subtext happening there, but also is suggesting this genderqueer identity for the character. And there are quite a few stories in here that do similar things. Also, one of my favorite stories in this collection is... <laughs> I, I don't know, maybe a bit obscure. It's drawing on a cultural touchstone that I think if you're very familiar with it, you're gonna get more out of it. If you all are not familiar with the children's classics, the Frog and Toad books, you really should read them. They're excellent. I love I loved them as a kid. I love reading them to my kids and my kids enjoy them. But one thing that's interesting that I didn't know until I was an adult is that the author of those books was a closeted gay man who was writing these stories about this beautiful deep friendship between frog and toad, these two male animals, right? I mean, like there's, this is not the first book to pick up on some of the queer subtext in the frog and toad stories, but it is drawing on it. Um, what is the story that does this? Yeah, so in Good Fences Make Good Neighbors, one of the inspirations for that story is frog and toad are friends, but it kind of twists it in a darker way and is talking, I think, about being closeted and also about emotional abuse in queer relationships. Like, this book is so good, but it's got a lot of layers. I freaking loved it so much. E easily gonna be one of the best things that I've read this year, and I kind of just want to go read it again because it, I didn't, it was the book I didn't know that I needed. So I, I don't, I don't know if that's selling it well, but hopefully that will help people where this reaches the right audience because I just think a lot of the reviewers on Goodreads, I'm like, yeah, I think you're just not, maybe not the audience for this book, but I think a lot of people could love it and I certainly did. I have also finished reading Black on Both Sides, A Racial History of Trans Identity. I think this is an interesting book. It's difficult to review because it is very academic very much geared towards an academic audience. There is so much theory, I would say, to an unnecessary degree, and the language that it's using is very theoretical and difficult to parse for the average reader. This is not written with the average reader in mind, and so I think that makes it difficult to recommend widely. However, there is a lot of content in this book that is really interesting and really valuable. I just wish that the author had done more to explicitly make some of the points and draw some of the connections. The other thing too is that I think the title, A Racial History of Trans Identity, might give you the wrong idea of what this book is. It's not really a history of Black trans people. It's more unpacking the history of the treatment of Black people with regards to gender, degendering them, or not treating Black women as feminine or female in the same ways, and also the existence of cross-dressing as a common narrative in escape stories from enslavement. So that's like the first part of the book, right? And then it does do some interesting things looking at some case studies of how the news media in the 1950s would treat black trans people as kind of the butt of a joke in their coverage. So it explores some of that. I just think there's not a lot of clear connections drawn to the modern day treatment of trans people, even though I feel like the author has those things in mind. I said, if you know much about the situation and you're reading this, you're gonna draw some of those connections yourself, but the author doesn't really explicitly do very much of that. So I liked it and I'm glad I read it. I learned some interesting things things, but I think it's difficult to recommend widely, and I wish the author would maybe take some of the information here, expand upon it, and write it for a general audience, because I think that could be really valuable. So uh, I did finish this. It was, whew, it was a lot to get through, but I did. So this is a book. We love it. It's our favorite. <laughs> No, 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 it's not my favorite. I do not even know the book. You don't even know it. Okay. Oh my goodness, I got interrupted by my child and I had to get some help getting them out of the room so I could finish filming. So those are all the things that I finished. I am up to eight things, which is very exciting. I have three, four, 
I have four books in progress right now. I don't anticipate finishing all of them before the end of the readathon, but I'll probably finish at least a couple of them. And then I did have one book that I ended up DNFing, but I want to talk about it because I think some of y'all might be into it. This was a case of something where I was like, this is just not my thing, but it might be your thing. So let me share. I had an advanced copy of The First Bright Thing by J.R. Dawson. This is a debut historical fantasy novel by a non-binary author, which is why I was like, hey, let me pick this up for this. I read about 50 pages of it before deciding to not continue with it. Again, I think it's just not really for me. I knew going in that this was a circus book, which are hit and miss for me. I can like a circus book, but sometimes I don't like a circus book. But I took a chance on this because it's queer and has like found family, which I love. And I do like those elements of it. However, what I did not know going into this is that it is two of my other like least liked things. <laughs> Circus is like a hit and miss, but it also does two things that I really generally don't like and I'm a hard sell on. One is I'm not a big fan of time travel narratives. There are rare exceptions, but I'm a very hard sell on a time travel story. This has time travel elements in it. I am also not a big fan of historical fiction set around World War One and World War Two. I can occasionally like it, but it's not often that I do. And this is historical fantasy set around World War One and World War Two. So it's got like three things not in its favor for me. But if those are your buzzwords, maybe this will work for you. It's coming out in June, so you can pre-order it if that sounds of interest. They're saying it's good for fans of Addie LaRue and The Night Circus. So I liked both of those books, but I didn't love either of them. So I don't know why I thought this would be a hit for me. I was hopeful. I was hopeful. I don't just don't think it's my thing. The other thing about this is that I sort of figured out very quickly what I thought was going to happen. And when I was deciding whether or not I wanted to continue with it, I decided to flip to the end to see if I was right and kind of skim the ending. And I was and I just don't think this is the kind of thing I enjoy reading and I just don't think it's for me. But again, it might be for you, so I do wanna highlight it. So maybe go check it out if that sounds like your vibe. Like I said, I do have four books in progress. I am listening to two audiobooks right now. <laughs> of course I am, because I had started one and I liked it, but I just, I really wanted something quieter and cozier and so I started a second one. So I'm listening to two of them. The second one is very short, so I'll probably finish it pretty quickly. That one is The Companion by E.E. E. Ottoman. Oh my god, I am really, really loving this. It is a quiet, cozy, queer, polyamorous romance with two trans women and a trans man. It's historical. It's set in like 1948, I want to say. And I... It's so delightful and charming and lovely. I'm saying it's cozy, so I should point out that it does have explicit sex scenes in it. So it's not like cozy and not sexy. It's cozy and sexy, which could be a positive or a negative depending on your preferences and your romance reading. But I am really, really enjoying it. I, yeah, this is like what my... <laughs> What, what I need right now is some like sweet, cozy, quiet country romance. I just, it's great. I'm really loving that. Probably will get to finish that before the end of the readathon. The other audiobook that I'm listening to, which I am enjoying and I will continue, is Victory is Greater Than Death by Charlie Jane Anders. This is a very fun, action packed why science fiction story following a teen girl who is the clone of an alien like military commander. And when she gets to a certain age, she's supposed to get her memories back from her other life. Maybe it doesn't work super well, but she ends up in space with her best friend and like a crew of people. And they're trying to like save the universe. And it's very fun and light and funny and has kind of a very diverse cast of characters. So I am enjoying it. It's just, it was a little 
action heavy for what I was wanting today. I wanted something a little quieter and more chill, but I will definitely return to it and I am liking it and would recommend it if that sounds up your alley. Physically, I am continuing to read Love After the End, an anthology of two spirit and indigiqueer speculative fiction, and I am really liking it a lot. I'm a little more than halfway through it, so I've read quite a few of the stories in this anthology and they're great. They're really interesting. Some of them are kind of apocalyptic or post-apocalyptic, but also have love and romance as part of them and feel very hopeful in general, which I like. I think they're doing some cool things with indigenous identity and queer identity and the speculative sci-fi or fantasy elements of it. So yeah, enjoying this. Also plan to probably finish this before the end of the readathon, which is great. Lastly, on ebook, I'm reading an advanced copy of Venom and Vow by Anna Marie McLemore and Elliot McLemore. They're trans authors who are married to each other, and I've never read from Elliot McLemore before, but I love Anna Marie McLemore's writing, so this sounded interesting. It's a dual perspective fantasy story following characters from opposite sides of a political war, and yeah, so far I'm liking it. It comes out in May. I don't know that I have a ton to say about it yet, but it's been fairly enjoyable. That is my update. Finally, I'm on here to do this. I make no promises as to how frequently <laughs> I will update you for the rest of the readathon, but it is Saturday evening. Monday is the last day of the readathon, so I've got a couple of solid days left to finish some books, and I'm thinking we might hit 11. I, I think that that could be doable. The companion is very short. I'll definitely get through it. I think I can finish Love After the End, and I think I'll probably finish Victories Greater Than Death, which is exciting because, as I said, I am donating $20 for every book read to the Callan Lord Community Health Center. So if I finish 11 books, it's like $220, y'all. That is nothing to sneeze at. Thank you so much to everybody who's donated. It's been amazing to see the support that this readathon has gotten. And watching Sim talk about the attention it's gotten in media has been amazing. Elliot Page posted about it. Like, what? I, I love that this has spread the way that it has, and we're able to raise so much funds for trans organizations. It's amazing. So I will be back. Uh, it's going well. It is the end of the Trans Rights Readathon, and I'm here with my final update before we finish out this vlog. I've got to say this week has been great. It's gone incredibly well. I read a lot more than I was expecting to. I got through 11 books. Granted, some of them are pretty short, but still, that's amazing. On top of that, between the $20 per book that I'm donating to the Callan Lord Community Health Center for the 11 books, that's $220, plus what all of you have contributed so far, we are ending the readathon at $775 raised, which is amazing. Again, thank you so much to everybody who's donated so far. I'm really amazed that we've been able to do this. I'm still hoping maybe we can reach that thousand dollar mark by the end of the month. So if you haven't donated yet and you've been meaning to, there is still time. The fundraiser is ongoing until April 1st and then that is the cutoff. So let's see if we can get it over a thousand dollars because we're pretty close and that would be absolutely amazing. And don't forget, I probably mentioned it earlier in the video, but if you want to be entered into the giveaway, don't forget to email me your receipt. We've got some people entered and I will be drawing a winner on April 1st. So. Ah, it's so exciting. Um, okay, so let's talk about the final three things that I finished for the Trans Rights Readathon. I finished reading Love After the End. This, I think, is a really strong anthology doing a lot of interesting things. And while the stories are dystopian and post-apocalyptic and have some pretty intense, difficult subject matter, they all have at least a little bit of hope to them and love. And I just think they're really beautiful. They're doing some very interesting things in terms of combining things like indigenous culture and identity with science fiction and using it as commentary on things like colonization and racism. I really really enjoyed this. I would give it four and a half stars and I would for sure recommend it. It's pretty easy to get through. It's got some great stories in it. I'm glad that I read it. I also finished listening to Victories Greater Than Death by Charlie Jane Anders. I've got to say this does have a pretty cute little sapphic romance side plot between our main character and another character. There were some things that I really loved about this book. I think it's fun. I think it's a great space adventure. I love all of the diversity, the found family, the 
happier characters. Like there's a lot that I really like about this book. I will say for me personally, it is heavy on the action and plot, which takes it down a bit for me in enjoyment. That said, if you are somebody who likes a plot driven sci fi adventure in space, this is going to be a great book for you to pick up. I think it's a really fantastic version of what it is, even if I'm the person who's like, give me more of the little scenes between the characters instead of so much space battle. But that's me. That's not like anything wrong with the book. It's just personal preference. So I like this one, I would recommend it. And I think especially if you're somebody who likes a very fast paced action packed adventure type book, this would be an awesome one to pick up. And lastly, I did finish reading The Companion by E.E. E. Ottoman. And this was delightful. It was really charming. I enjoyed it. It's an interesting mix because it's a cozy romance that's almost got cottagecore vibes to it a little bit like a very sweet cozy romance that is also very, very steamy. So if you're looking for that, if you're wanting a blend of very sexy, but also sweet and rural and cozy and charming, this would be a fantastic book to pick up. It's polyamorous. All of the characters involved are trans. The main character literally meets this other woman while she's in the woods looking for mushrooms. I it's it's great. It's really enjoyable. It's set in 1948. And there are some references to what things were like for queer and trans people at the time. But it doesn't get into a lot of detail. It really focuses mostly on their relationship with each other. And I really enjoyed it. I need to go find more things from E.E. E. Ottoman because the, it, it was a delight. I give it four stars. So there's my stack of books that we've gotten off my TBR for the readathon, plus the digital ones that are not here. It has been a really fantastic week. I hope you've enjoyed this vlog and hearing about all of these books, and hopefully this sparked your interest in some new books by trans and non-binary authors to go and pick up. In terms of highlights, because I liked all of these books pretty well, but there are four books that I would say are my particular favorites of the ones that I read that I really enjoyed. The first would be Heart Haunt Havoc, by Fradis Moon. I really enjoyed this. I'm going to be looking to pick up more from Fradis Moon in the future. And I, you know, I'm kind of a sucker for a gothic horror novel. So this was definitely up my alley and just really good and really enjoyable. So I'm uh, on the lookout to maybe pick up another novella from this author. I also had a fantastic time with both books by C.L. Polk. At this point, I think I will probably pick up whatever C.L. Polk writes because I've never had a bad time with their writing. This I liked even better on reread, uh, even though I knew the end. And The Midnight Bargain was just very much my thing. So I enjoy their writing. The way that they do world building and characters works for me. I like the way they mix in ideas and social commentary. So yeah, those were really fun for me. And then lastly, the biggest highlight of this and the most unexpected that you've already heard me gush about a lot is The Merry Spinster. This was a big surprise. I expected to enjoy it, but I didn't expect to love it as much as I did. And this is going to be on my list of favorite books I've read this year, which is super exciting to have found through this project. I would love to hear from you in the comments down below. If you participated in the readathon, what did you read? Tell me about some of the highlights of your week. What are things that you now want everybody else to go out and read? And also let me know in the comments if there was anything that I read that you are now like, okay, I'm going to go pick that up. That is on my TBR. Sounds good. Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, it always helps if you give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.